I mean, okay, I I'm trying. Hey everyone, I am so excited because I just got in the mail my Wisdom Panel DNA Collection Kit. I'm going to be doing this on all four of our cats, Coco, Eloise, Haroon, and Ferguson. And I'm even going to try it out on some of our foster kittens. I'm excited about these kits because in addition to the ancestry information you get, they also test for genetic health conditions. The other thing I'm excited about is that it tells you your cat's blood type. That could be really important information to have, especially if you ever have to go and get a blood transfusion for a cat. You need to know their blood type. And then there are traits tests which look at how DNA is physically expressed in everything from color to hair length to tail length. And then there's ancestry. People ask me all the time about what breed my cats are or what breed my foster kittens are. And if you know me, you know that breed is really of very little importance to me because I believe rescued cats are the best cats. And in most cases, rescued cats are going to be domestic cats like Ferguson, maybe with some variation in hair length. But the truth is that all cats do have an ancestry and knowing something about their lineage might be really interesting information to have. Now listen, every single time that I have a tabby cat with longer hair, like Moz, people will say to me in the comments, oh my gosh, he's gotta be part Maine Coon. Every time that I have a color point, like Candyman, people will say, oh, he's gotta be part Siamese, right? And you know, what I usually say is, no, these are domestic cats who have different color patterns or different hair lengths, but that doesn't necessarily say anything about their breed. But now that I have these kits, I'm excited to find out what the science says, because maybe the science is gonna show that they really do have some of those breeds in their lineage. Or maybe it's going to show that they are domestic cats who have interesting variations in their color pattern and their hair length. Listen, I'm willing to be proven wrong. I'm excited to see what it says. Anyway, these kits are super simple and I'm going to show you how to use them. When you get your kit, you just open it up and inside you'll see a shipping box. Keep that because that's how you're going to mail your DNA sample. Inside, you'll see instructions for collecting the DNA using two sterile swabs. All you have to do to collect your cat's DNA sample is to take the sterile swab and insert it into your cat's cheek pad. Gently roll the bristles between the cat's cheeks and gums to collect the cheek cells. Make sure you're using both swabs on the same cat and doing it for at least 15 seconds. I'm doing Coco and Eloise. Those are my two older girls. I feel like I know them so well, but this will let me know even more about them. For Haroon, I think his ancestry will probably be the most interesting since he is a Bengal cat. Ferguson, I'm excited to see because he's been such a hot mess health-wise. You know, I really wonder if there are genetic health issues that are going to pop up on his results. The other thing I'm really looking forward to with him is seeing if he has the dilution variant because I always used to think he looked like he was a diluted orange color, but as he's getting older, I feel like he's starting to look more orange. So this will solve that puzzle for me. I'm also going to test Candyman. He looks like he's a white cat, but he's actually a color point. You can see that his ears and tail have a different color coming in, so I would expect to see the color point variant on his test, but I'm curious to see whether he has the Siamese breed in his ancestry or whether he is a domestic cat with a color point variant. Carrie has three different colors, so I think she's going to have a really interesting test to look at. And since my friends are adopting her, it's gonna be nice to be able to tell them any genetic health information that comes up. I predict that Carrie's DNA test is going to say she's 100% beautiful. We don't need science to tell us that. And then I'm going to do Moz. Everyone says Moz looks like he's a Maine Coon. I suspect he's probably a domestic cat with a long hair variant, but hey, I'm no scientist. Okay, so now that I've collected all my samples and the swabs are dry, I just put them back into the sleeve and write the cat's name. Before you close it up, make sure you've registered the kit to the cat using the unique code on the kit and hopping on their website to fill out a little bit of information about your cat. Once you've done that, you can close it up and just pop it in the mail and wait. And honestly, I think the waiting is probably the hardest part. 
it has been about two weeks since I sent in my samples and I have my results. I'm so excited. So all I have to do is open each cat's profile and I can just check out the results. So the great news is none of my cats tested positive for any of the genetic health conditions that Wisdom Panel tests for. I was able to get all of the cat's blood types, so I'm definitely going to be adding that to my cat's records. And then there's the ancestry and traits results, which were really interesting and I have to say somewhat surprising. Okay, so let's start with the less surprising ones. Ferguson is 98% American domestic cat, which makes sense. Same with Carrie. And Haroon was obviously identified as 100% Bengal, so no surprise there. Then there's Coco and Eloise, which honestly shocked me. I mean, Coco is 10% Siberian, 11% Scottish Fold. What the heck, Coco? That's pretty wild to see. Eloise's are even wilder. It says she's 16% Norwegian forest cat. I mean, that cracks me up because she's definitely always at the highest point in the catio, just like a little tree dweller. So that's just my Norwegian forest cat girl. <laughs> but now for the moment of truth, is Candyman a Siamese? No, he is 91% American domestic cat. Called it. And while he did not have any Siamese, it did show that he is 9% ragdoll? Huh. Okay, so what about Moz? Is Moz a Maine Coon? Drum roll, please. No! Moz is 95% American domestic cat. In fact, the only cat who showed any lineage of Maine Coon breed was Coco. <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty funny. Okay, so how is it that Moz looks like he does? Well, it's because of his genetic traits. When you look into his traits, it shows that he has two copies of the long hair variant, which is why he has that beautiful long haired coat that he does. It even shows you the technical details of that gene variant. And for Candyman, he has the color point variant, which causes that temperature sensitive pigment production at the face, ears, and tail. Another interesting trait I saw was that Haroon has a glitter coat variant. It's a sort of iridescent sheen. I had never even heard of that, but now that I look at him closely, I realize, hey, he does have the glitter coat variant. That's pretty cool. And then there's Fergie, and guess what? He does have a dilution variant. This is the genetic trait that takes a cat's color and lightens it. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I think the reason that he often looks a little bit darker is because he's always wet. That boy is obsessed with dunking his head under the sink. So I thought this was really cool and I'm super grateful to Wisdom Panel for giving me the opportunity to learn more about my cat's health, ancestry, and traits. If you want to learn more about your cats, head to wisdompanel.com and try it for yourself. Are you a Norwegian forest cat? <laughs> oh, that's so funny.